Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Guy Who Tips podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live on a Wednesday, wrapping up the week. We're only doing two shows this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're, you know, just kicking it, okay? The official weapon of the show is... The taser? Nope. Uh, phone gym. <laughs> and the unofficial sport... Bullet ball. A bullet ball extreme. Uh, you can find our podcast everywhere you get podcasts. You can hang out with us live, listen to us play music, and before we go live, on crowdcast.io. You can also go, which the link is in the show notes, you can also follow us on YouTube. Join our YouTube page and uh, see the videos when we post them there the next day. Um, so there's a bunch of ways for you to enjoy the content of the show, and we look at comments and all that stuff from there, too. Um, this is, uh, another show that'll probably be a little quicker for us, not quick for most podcasts. And, um, you know, we're just going to kick it. We're just going to talk, um, and then get into some topics and stuff that I, I got here. Uh, first things first though, Karen, do you have any banter that you want to do? Mm-hmm. All right. Let me get play some music so we know where to put commercials later. Another cycle of music remix. All right, Karen, give me one of them banters over there, player. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is uh, I I kind of I surprised uh, my mama for uh, Christmas because I was kind of in a dilemma. I had ordered her some uh, shoes, and what happened? Oh, I ordered her some Uggs. I didn't know they had slippers. I was like, oh, I think she might like these because I ordered her some Uggs a while ago because she was looking at one of my other Uggs. She was like, oh, I like them. So I made a mental note. So I sent her some Uggs. She loved them. So uh, I was, you know, digging around trying to figure out what I was going to get her. So I was like, well, I'll get her some Uggs slippers. And I was like, I'm pretty sure they probably feel like clouds on your feet. So they did the thing. You know how uh, pr- prior to Christmas, they were like, if you order it for this time, we can get it there for Christmas. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I ordered it and was like, nah, dog, we, we we sorry, it's gonna be the day after. I was like, shit. So I was, I didn't want her to think I didn't get her anything. So what I did is I ordered her some flowers. Uh, and the thing about the flowers, the flowers was like, hey, yeah, dog, uh, we don't deliver on Christmas Day. So she got the flowers early, and then she got the, uh, the shoes the day after Christmas. So when the flowers came, I called and stuff like that. And so uh, yesterday, I had called her, and uh, I was like, I just wanted to be sure you got my gift. And I didn't realize that. I, I guess I must have did not check the box to present it as like a gift. <laughs> so she was like, I didn't know who said it. I just seen some shoes, some shoes show up at my house. <laughs> I was like, my bad, mom. I was like, they're from me and uh, Roderick. So she was happy. She was surprised. She was like, I thought it was enough. I said, nope. I said, I'd rather you get it too early and then get it too late than to not get nothing at all. Because I was like, I want, I wanted to be sure that you know that I didn't forget about you uh, type of thing, you know. So I, I, she was very shocked and surprised. I was very happy that she was pleased with it. She was like, oh, I like these. So it was just really good just to talk to her uh, yesterday when she uh, got the slippers. Oh, that was very nice of you. And I'm glad she enjoyed her gift. Um, my f- banter thing is uh, I just know that the cashiers at Trader Joe's are really good at Tetris. They got to be. <laughs> they got to be. The way they be packing them motherfucking paper bags I clear, don't to you? perfection. I don't know how they do it. it mm-hmm. They always get the perfect amount in. Without busting the bag, without breaking the handle at the top, is never and they never use more bags than you need. Like they must get demerits or something if they <laughs> use half a bag. That must make them practice tension before they get you gotta you gotta win a hundred rounds when we put you on the floor. Yeah, I've been trying to eat better. So I've been we I went to Traders Joe. I asked people on Twitter, like, hey, um, what's some good like healthy snacks that are easy? Because I right. think people will be like, you know, 
oh, I got, here's a healthy recipe. You take some tomatillos and you get some this and you do that. And then and you go to this store and then you do this and then you cook this for seven hours. And then uh, throughout the week, you eat a bite of it every day. And I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> I'm not knocking that. I, I do stuff like that too. Right. But I meant like when you just like, instead of ge- eating chips, you know what right. I mean? And so people like gave me a bunch of suggestions and a lot of it was stuff you can just get from like Trader Joe's, you mm-hmm. know, it was hummus and um uh i like a good hummus yeah you know vegetable chips uh apple chips uh uh like crunchy stuff like that um you know some just it was a bunch of stuff you know in addition to your regular just your fruits and veggies and stuff like that but i want to you know sometimes i get that 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 urge to snack and Mm -hmm. it's like hmm i don't want to just go snack on some bullshit so yeah i made this run and we bought all this stuff and i mean when i tell you they got that shit in two bags i don't know how i don't know how he got it in two bags and it was like jenga i was looking at him yeah. like I, and I, I didn't say anything but i'm looking like did he overstuff that i be thinking like did they forget something i'm yeah. like damn did i did, i'm gonna get home and be like oh of course there's only two bags the soup dumplings aren't in here or whatever <laughs> but no they mm-hmm. always get it all in there so shout out to them just want to show them some appreciation and some love. Thank you. And uh, 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 on that same vein, uh, Roger got some veggie chips. Them things was flames. Uh, and I think they was called root veggie chips. So I'm assuming all of them are like root vegetables. Turnips, parsnips, yeah. Them things was flames. And we got some banana chips. And I like banana chips. I fell in love with banana chips when I went to Jamaica. And these are good, but I clear they do not. And I and I and I think the banana chips were plantains and not like banana banana chips. And so, I love me a good fried plantain chip. Uh, when I was there, because they light and they're 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 snacky and they they kind of think. Because for me, I like crunchy shit. Like I just like it's just something about the crunchiness that I love about them. And so, I've been uh, tearing those up and also. Uh, I'm realizing, uh, and it's a catch-22. I shout out to the people that have been diabetic for a long time. That's been demanding that they make diabetic shit taste better because that you know stuff that like with sugar-free, reduced sugar, that shit just tastes terrible. You know, you be like, what the fuck is this? Because I would try it years ago, and I be like, oh, who the fuck wants to eat this? But as the years go on, you know, people that are like, hey, I got to live like this and I don't want my shit to be flavorless. Y'all step y'all game up, do better. And so over the years, they have made the formulas better. And a lot of the sugar free, reduced sugar shit tastes a whole hell of a lot better than it used to. Yeah, it's probably just new chemicals and shit that we don't know what they do to our bodies yet. <laughs> true, so true. We'll all be growing a third arm 20 years from now. But and not even yeah, know I, it. I've been trying to for a while, you know, that's been something I've been trying to do is like cut back on like just like if there's an alternative to something like oh this has less sugar let me get that oh it's a coke zero i, I love coke zero it doesn't some people say it, the taste bothers them i can't i can't really tell the difference um I, well i can't from the bottle i can tell in the um, fountain uh but you know stuff like that i've been doing that for a while but um yeah I, i've been trying with some of these like alternative snacks i've been saying like wait they have reese's cups with zero sugar i mean i want to at least try it mm-hmm. you know just see what it tastes like see it might it, it might like... be whack and i just throw it in the trash right and be like, well but, that was a bad idea but at least i wanted uh, to try with yeah. something before i'd be look like bitch but it ain't got no sugar the fuck i'm here for <laughs> um it's really sad how genuine poured his heart out about his anxiety due to his sex all addiction <laughs> And he, was, we, he was. He's a sexaholic. And all we did was slow grind in the club to his cry for help. He tried to tell us. Oh, yes, he did. Okay. He had, he, he was so anxious about it, and we didn't. That, that's fuck. a whole. That's I think that's the title of the song. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it for me too. Okay. Uh, last one. Breaking. Breaking news. I decided that being the guy that people want to talk to, despite clearly having my headphones in, uh, while I'm shopping. I've decided it's a compliment and I'm just going to keep y'all updated on my new outlook on life and see how where it takes me because because fuck it because they're not going to stop. So I, I, Claire, I might as well yeah, stop it, looking at it as a bad thing. I've decided to change the way I look at it. I view it now as a positive thing of, oh, you want to talk to me so bad. You don't care what I'm doing. You don't care that I'm listening. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast. I think since we last spoke, Nick Jew was on there. Bridget was on there. 
and they were recapping the year and i was like oh man it was a good episode i was getting into it and i was you know going to check out you know uh at the grocery store and buddy just started doing a whole thing about the no sugar Reese's Reese's pieces. He's like, oh, so you uh no sugar Reese's cup? Hey, you tried the caramel? I was like, nah, I ain't tried that. Oh, what about this? I was like, oh, nah, I just oh, okay, I'm gonna just have to take my headphones out. You you wanna <laughs> you wanna make this a whole conversation? <laughs> yeah. So fuck it. He liked me that much. He <laughs> some about my face, some about my demeanor. Maybe it was what I had on. He decided I like you so much. I want to tell you about candy. And I don't think I don't think what you're doing should even matter. It shouldn't get in the way of that. So fine. I I I will put like this. I'm better. I'm not gonna say I'm excellent, but I am better of actually paying attention as an extrovert that sometimes don't give a fuck about what's happening around me and what other people are doing. Over the years, I have gotten better and picked up on context because like, oh, they don't want to be bothered. But you know, it's some people that go through life, they're just oblivious to that. They're like, you bitch, you're gonna get these words. You're gonna get all the words, all the words I got to say right now. You're gonna get them no matter what. No good your headphones, I don't give a fuck. Loud music, I don't give a fuck. I, we gonna talk and I have determined that now is the time. It is what it is, guys. Right? Let's go ahead and get into some other news. news. News, news. All right, and who knows? Lil Uzi Vert plans to quit music. Wants to take tap into fashion. For real? Mm-hmm. I think I've heard that name before. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay, I didn't I, know I, he knew Lil Uzi Vert. I think. What's your favorite Lil I Uzi Vert did. song? I nah, I didn't go that much. Now, who who is the music? Now, the music is who who? Mm. I don't know none of this music, but I heard the name. I think he a rapper. Okay, well, he is a rapper. He spoke with TMZ at Terminal 27 earlier this month. That's not a club. They just caught his ass at the airport, I believe. Okay, <laughs> I was to say, that do sound like a, a club. He said his album, Love is Rage 3, will be his final album. Mm. I always think it's interesting when rappers say they're going to have a finite number of albums. I think the same thing is interesting about Quentin Tarantino and his I'm going to only do 10 movies thing. Because it's an arbitrary number that you picked, and almost no one sticks to it. Like, almost everybody ends up coming. I remember for a long time, uh, Lupe Fiasco used to do this, like, and then this going to my last album, and I'm now going to do it. And then he made, like, three or four more albums since then, because, like, the fuck else you going to do, nigga? You rap. You rap real good. You still Shit is going to still keep happening in the world. You might want to have something to say, you know? Um, even Andre 3000 put, I mean, he put out a flute album. Like, you're an artist. You might want to express yourself, and music is yeah. something that you know how to do and right. something that people will pay attention to you doing. So, like, I just find it interesting whenever, especially like younger guys like this, are like, yeah, I'm out of the game after this. And it's like, I mean, maybe you are, but very often you're not. Agreed, agreed. Now, I, y'all know me, child. Somebody will probably be like, you remember this song? And they play, I'm like, I know that. That's that, you know, I, I, I know a lot of songs and don't know who the hell the artist is. So I probably have heard a little Uzi Vert. And I've, every time you probably play it for my life, that's my jam. Don't ask me who it is, though. Uzi said construction for his clothing company's home office has already started. It's too early to say if his girlfriend, JT, will be involved. The news is surprising considering Uzi was part of two number one albums last year. His own Pink Tape and Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday, too. Mm. So, yep. There we go. That's the who news for today, everybody. Kevin Hart. Somebody asked, is he the one with the infinity stone in his head? Yes. Oh, okay. That dude. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Hart is suing controversial YouTuber Tasha K. I like that controversial Again? YouTube. Controversial YouTuber sounds like her entire job description. Like she's just a YouTuber, but I don't think I've heard her name without controversial in front of it in a long time. Uh, but yeah, he's suing her. And he's I don't I think this is his first time suing her, but I know she no. was sued by um um 
Cardi B. Cardi B. That's why I was saying. That's why I said again. Yeah. But supposedly, you know, she moved all the way to Africa, wherever that means. You know, <laughs> to Africa. Niggas, you know, the, the state shit. of Africa. She put her move, move money over there. So now she's been doing, you know, we saw her do interviews with, um, uh, uh, interviews with uh, Will Smith's alleged former like friend, and the guys accusing Will Smith of being gay and saying he walked in on him and Dwayne Martin having sex. And I I, I didn't play it on the show. I didn't cover it on the show really because I, I it was so salacious and ridiculous. At some point, I was like, when are we gonna start it? And I, and it also feels kind of homophobic, but mm -hmm. it, there's something weird about how giddy people are for the so and so might secretly be gay thing, right? But it was also the way the dude was talking. It was talking like he was doing almost like a comedy routine, and I don't mean like like he was making jokes and trying to be funny. I mean like it's something you would write on a sketch show or something. Like if you were trying to be funny, it's something you write on Atlanta uh, or something like that. Okay, like like no laugh track, but just absurdly weirdly hilarious in the way that he was stating it like one of the things he, i just remember being like is i walked in the room and Dwayne was on top of will just murdering him just murdering and i was okay, like yeah just over the top this is, yeah the, the, the language sounds like some shit you say to try to go viral and be funny um mm -hmm. uh, but yeah so kevin hart apparently um filed this lawsuit November 22nd, 1920, I mean, 2023. They sent a letter to Tasha K regarding her recent and ongoing violations of civil and criminal law. Um, they demand she immediately cease and desist all activity. Um, now, I'm, I don't know how we know if someone got the court filing or what, but... Yeah, I guess so, because once you do it, it becomes public. Yeah, apparently she's threatening to publish a damaging story on social media um however they declared that Hart could avoid publicly seeing the story if he paid her two hundred and fifty thousand dollars no that which sounds like blackmail yes and That's you know kevin he's... hart has been blackmailed before and mm -hmm. literally his friend went to jail or some shit off of mm -hmm. him fighting that so he ain't exactly the one to be like here's your money mm -mm. Uh, the documents claim that the act falls under penal code section 518 and gives rise to both criminal and civil liability against you and anyone involved in your efforts to extort Mr. Hart, thus making Tasha's alleged effort to extract payment from the father of four by threatening exposure of information supposedly harmful to him in a as a textbook example. Um, yeah, they reported the incident to the police told investigators the team's understanding of the story in question was an interview with Mr. Hart's former assistant, Maisha Shakes, that supposedly includes scandalous assertions against him. In advance of your threatened publication of the story, you posted a teaser with Miss Shakes on YouTube, which clearly was intended as a threat. You know, the other part is this. If you ask him for $250,000 to keep you from putting out the interview, it doesn't really sound like you're doing this for any good intentions because if mm -hmm. like let's say let's like to me this is so unscrupulous it's like if someone was like i'm going on such on the the good morning show with gail king and i want to tell her about the time i was sexually assaulted by blank celebrity gail king and then would never reach out to the celebrity and be like how much money to keep this story quiet right you either doing it because it's newsworthy oh, you're yes. doing it to, right. as an advocate for the victim or to spread awareness, or you're not. That's Correct. it. Correct. So, like, one, there, what amount of, one, any amount of money sounds, yeah, it sounds super shady if this is true. Right. And on top of that, every time you go, it's going to go up and up and up and up. So, no, I'm just not paying you to getting zero out of me and you figure it out. Now, the thing is, dog, because somebody was like, why she keep doing this? Gina? But I keep thinking about this, man. Why does, why does she keep doing it? Because, we, aka y'all, you know, everybody, keep sharing the clips and we keep treating the rumors as facts. Mm -hmm. And we don't care if it's vetted or not. We mm -hmm. like that it's salacious. We right. like that it's gossip. Mm -hmm. And we act as if it is real, regardless of what people say, no matter how crazy it sounds. We're like, yep, 
That's a fact that happened. That's how it is. So I could kind of see where a person that just, if they just said, I don't give a fuck about, you know, anything but views and clicks. I mean, Tasha K will always be rewarded for these things. So, yeah, and you know, the, I don't know that this lawsuit would even matter to her. No, and she's not the only one. There are other people that, that are, have this type of personality, too. A lot of them just aren't as big and aren't as famous as her. Some of them are bigger than her. But it's just that thing that these people will always be out because they're going to be rewarded for these actions because um, uh, the interaction, the tweets, the reposts, and not, that's currency now. More than money itself. Like that right there is more valuable because there's a lot of people that get a lot of tweets and a lot of interaction, but the niggas broke. Right. So that's so so that it does not always equal money. But in their mind, they're quote unquote rich at heart or whatever you want to call it, but they're not rich in their pockets. And so the thing is, is it, it, you're gonna take nothing from nothing because she ain't got nothing no way. Not trying to be funny, like you know, she's been sued. And she be keep going on and begging and not trying to find it. And all, if I was Cardi B, all this would, would prove why I would not let up for my lawsuit. Because you, obviously you have not learned your lesson. So why would I let up off of mine? Yeah, it's interesting though because like she's still doing her thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have thought that after what Cardi, the all the stuff she won and everything that they went through. And, you know, with it not being like a, um, a matter of like, debate like cardi won that and tasha k is like i'm still gonna do this messy shit to all these other celebrities mm -hmm. so um let's see an engineer attacked by a robot at tesla factory in austin hey y'all coming alive y'all uh, according to an injury report filed by tesla a robot originally designed for moving car parts attacked an engineer with its metal claw resulting in a trail of blood on the factory floor attacked what is that like RoboCop or some shit? How it do you attack? Red was did they get hacked? The, the right, is this Johnny Five alive? Right, or whatever. Because my, you know, my my thing is, if it quote unquote attacked him, it, it like it prompted on its own. Like, what the fuck is happening here? The robot reportedly pinned the engineer and clawed at his back and arm, leaving him immobilized with a laceration cut or open wound on his left hand. Eventually, the engineer was released after another employee pressed the emergency stop button. Well, that's nice of the, the robot that let that happen. You know, because the robot didn't have to do that. So that was that was nice of it to be like, all right, I'll pretend that this button can stop me. Um, For now. According to reports, <laughs> right. I'll be back. Right. I'll be back. <laughs> the, according to reports, the employee didn't need to take time off work. Well, it is Tesla with Elon Musk. So he probably couldn't take time off work. Jeff, I didn't have no PTO. Back to work, slave. Uh, witnesses say two robots were disassembled before the incident so that the engineer and his crew could work on the machines, but a third was inadvertently left on, resulting in the 2021 attack. Well, yeah. Because the third one saw what you did to the first two. And it's like, no, disassemble. Johnny Five don't want to be disassembled. And starts, you know, bitch slapping employees. That's, that's what happens. Uh, according to the U.S. occupation, say OSHA, according to OSHA, nearly one in every 21 workers at Giga Texas Factory experienced injuries last year, while the median rate around the industry is one in every 30. Yeah, I'd say one of them is a lot of people getting hurt. They're getting mm -hmm. hurt. They're getting injured at these places that are uh, y'all want to put these fucking robots at robots and people. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I I mean I guess hit control out the lead or whatever, but I unplug it. Pour some water on it. Like, I don't know what you like. That's Pull the so power scary. source from the wall. How you ever gonna work there again if they got robots? You know what I mean? I can't just clock in and a robot's still there, dog. And his job was working on robots? Mm. Nah, fuck that. Um, Secret Service is investigating... I might be robot racist then, because child, no. Secret Service is investigating the Dukes of Hazzard star John Schneider after Biden death threats. Well, he's just a good old boy. I'm sure he didn't mean any harm. Right? <laughs> uh, according to John Schneider of Dukes of Hazzard fame, he, uh, uh, he appeared actor John Snyder of Dukes of Hazzard fame appears to have earned the attention of the Secret Service with a since deleted post on social media calling for President Biden and his son to be publicly hung. Why do you think that's okay to say? Right! 
do you think we don't hate Trump? But for four years, I learned and knew you keep your hate within a certain parameter and you definitely don't put it on social media mm-hmm. anywhere you can track it with some wild shit like that. What? What be wrong with people? I also, uh, not to turn this to another Biden thing, but <clears throat> what the fuck has Biden done so much that Republicans want him hung? Him and his son. The fuck has... They don't really do shit in that way. They pretty decent people that just trying to keep the fucking government afloat. They don't really seem to do anything that would fuck it. Like, you're getting the right... You're getting Roe v. Wade overturned. Every fucking state got some type that's of... Draconian, the, that's the thing you're winning. I don't fucking understand. Every fucking state got some type of draconian ass uh, LGBTQ battles going on right. with the school boards and all this type of shit. Like, you're getting books burned and shit. Like, what the fuck do y'all... What are you mad about? Right. What are you? What did you about? wake up and lose on that day to said I gotta say something about the president and his son dying? Damn, they be going hard. Mm-hmm. Um, Snyder sixty three went from hazard to potential business with a reply Wednesday to Biden's post on X, in which the president wrote that Donald Trump poses many threats to the United States, but the greatest threat he poses to our democracy. If we lose that, we lose everything. Biden concluded, and then he replied, Snyder. Mr. President, I believe you are guilty of tre- treason and should be publicly hung. Your son, too. You make it shit up. Snyder has allegedly tweeted other messages accusing Biden of treason, uh, along with Dr. Al- Anthony Fauci. <laughs> what a cliche. Uh, Representative for Secret Service told TMZ they were aware of his remarks. While they said they couldn't wouldn't comment further on matters involving protective intelligence, they did confirm they investigate all threats related to our protect these mm-hmm. what are, and then you wasting their time because you ain't gonna do shit right like so now you wasting the fucking now secret service gotta fly out to wherever the fuck you at mm-hmm. and you know hazard county or whatever and chase you over a bridge that collapses and then the you know the, the boss hog falls into it ah, those are sat down angrily yeah now they gotta do all this shit uh um let's see gen zers suffer from menu anxiety and some are scared to order their own food at restaurants new survey finds what mm-hmm. an overwhelming 86 percent of gen zers have struggled with menu anxiety while ordering at a restaurant um british restaurant chain prezzo which serves italian cuisine surveyed over 2,000 people in the uk about how at ease they felt when they ate out and it found that 86 86 percent of gen z had been impacted by menu anxiety when dining in restaurants compared to 67% of all respondents. So that's still a majority of people that experience this type of anxiety. Gen Z just experiences it uh, higher. Okay. But it seems like everyone does this. Now, what is menu anxiety? It is largely triggered by the cost of the meal, not being able to find something they like on the menu and regretting what they order. Over a third of millennials said having too many options on the menu was also a trigger. I relate because Cheesecake Factory, I can't do that, it. That's, <laughs> that was like a four-page novel. Uh, more than four pages, but that 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 fucking menu, I can't do it. I don't know if it's some type of mental hang up or what, but I, nothing. I I feel like I'm just reading it. I feel like I'm not picking. I'm just going. And what's on this page? Now, what was back on page three? Oh, I thought I saw something I wanted. Oh, no, but this is, it's Asian food. Now, how are they going to do Asian food? Right! But they also do spaghetti. That don't make sense. Then, uh, right. Is the low man going to just be spaghetti noodles? <laughs> right, but they also got sushi in the back. I'm confused. Man, okay, right. so I'm gonna, should I get the Japanese sushi? Or, but then, I don't know. They got, <laughs> yes! They got some soups. Now, how you going to... Who does soups? So you do I see clam the pot chowder. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it, it, like everything to me seems like I'm a regret ordering it. And like it's gonna be mid because they don't specialize in anything mm-hmm. except cheesecake. And I always end up taking too long to look at the menu and the waiter gets mad and all this stuff. So I can relate, but I guess it's like if every restaurant was Cheesecake Factory. Um, and what I wonder if it's because Gen Z, being some of the most screwed over people, don't have the money. Right. Everything costs more than it used to. Mm-hmm. And so their thing is like, I got one shot. I got one opportunity to get I this hope order this right. Is good, because if not, 
I just spent too much money on some yes. bullshit. Yes. And now from that perspective, I, I get it. I and, and I also think everybody views these things, you know, very differently. I'm to the point where I'm blessed. So I go in and I'll be like, I'll try this. If it's nasty, okay, I know not to try that bullshit again. Well, you don't care. Mm -mm. You just try normally try to order like whatever the most expensive thing. And and then, you know, the, so that's you know, that's your thing. Yes. Um but <laughs> <laughs> like you don't even know what's on it. You mm -hmm. just look at the price and just order it. Because it's because then you get it and you're surprised. <laughs> That's after fun. You're like, oh, I don't know it had carrots on it. I'm like it's in the description, but <laughs> if you only look at the price, then I guess you wouldn't know it had carrots on it. <laughs> I typically try to look at the description of the food. This is always like, oh, you always order something good. I'm like, all I do is read the description. <laughs> I don't know why you can't just read the description. <laughs> uh, and I guess this is my way to deal with, I guess, my own anxiety. So I'm like, I don't read it. I don't know how that <laughs> is going to help, but sure. 38% <laughs> of Gen Z and millennials said they wouldn't go to a restaurant if they hadn't looked at the menu beforehand. I could see that. Whew, that's a large percentage. I can see that because they want to be sure they can afford it. That's Yeah, that's probably part of it. Yeah, because I, I was thinking of just the... The food or whatever, but a lot. Sometimes my favorite experiences have been going in a place and not really knowing what they do there, mm -hmm. and then you know ordering and being like, "Oh, okay, all right, so this is Korean. All right, mm -hmm. didn't know that." Yeah, because I I've been broke by broke. When you go in there, you're like, mm, "Chad, mm, I guess it's gonna be bread and water." I'm looking at all these prices. <laughs> I also wonder how much um, talking, like, since people don't do as much talking to each other mm -hmm. i wonder how much of it is that too because like if you go to a new restaurant you can kind of ask the staff like what's good here what's the da 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 mm -hmm. and a lot of times they'll tell you like oh try this mm -hmm. oh this is what we specialize in you know i like when i go to a place and they have like something they like oh okay you you're this your first time eating here uh korean fried wings or whatever or you know the bibimbap or whatever it's called like i like that Another source of anxiety for almost half of 25 to 34-year-olds is not being able to pronounce the options on the menu when ordering. Child, me too. You know what I do? I motherfucking point because I be like, bitch, I can't pronounce this. This one, number 23, whatever that one is. Uh, young people are also largely influenced by their social media use. A third of 25 to 34-year-olds would choose items on the menu that would look best on social media. Oh, because you want to post a picture. Mm-hmm. Huh, I hadn't thought about that part. I thought they were going to say a third would set up a tripod and do a dance. Some do now. Uh, while they eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then get mad at the person behind them looking at them. Like, what the fuck your problem is? <laughs> I ain't expect to dance in I the middle of my the, meal. I can't do the flowers dance on top of the table without being judged. <laughs> while you eating your dinner? The younger generation tend to have more hangups about how they appear in public, said a recent Gallup poll, even found that they're more likely to report experiencing negative emotions such as stress, anxiety, and loneliness. NYU business professor Jason Had Hate uh, told Wall Street, the Wall Street Journal that a performative social media culture is partly to blame for high rates of anxiety and depression among Gen Z. We have a whole generation that's doing terribly. You're not creative. You're not future thinking. You're focused on threats in the present. Social media is also playing a major role in Gen Z's dining options. Nearly 40% of Gen Z prefer searching for things on Instagram and TikTok rather than Google or Google Maps. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I, I like the Instagram um, food options because a lot of times I find restaurants that I otherwise wouldn't even hear about. And the restaurants are advertising, so they'll be like, yo, we got... You know, check out the BLT special today or whatever. And you see a picture of it. It's like, okay, I'll, there was a place here that um, the People's Market I went out to because they have a good social media. And I saw on their social media they had a um, that thing. Thanksgiving burrito. Oh, that was so And I was like, bet. And I got, got my ass up and drove across town to try that Thanksgiving burrito, and it was fucking worth it. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I, that makes sense that the kids are doing it. Plus, I think, honestly, that's a better depiction of what the food is going to look like than yes. just the description or just the menu. Or like, even just the pictures online. A lot of times when you see it, a lot of times you're actually getting – it's, it's moving pictures, which kind of is different than the steel shot. 
moving pictures. Yeah, a lot of times, because you know, when people are doing Instagram and TikToks, they're moving, their cameras moving you mean around. Video? Video. That's what I mean. Moving oh my pictures. God. What is happening? <laughs> what? And, no, because. <laughs> No, because it's a 1923 <laughs> over there. <laughs> moving pictures. <laughs> you know. The them, moving pictures. See? <laughs> them, you know, the moving flicks. You know what I'm saying? We'll go down to the theater. <laughs> watch, watch a target. <laughs> Why do you need it black and white? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was when you married me. <laughs> sure, yep. Um, what should you keep in your glove compartment? According to a mechanic. Okay, let's license see many, and re, uh, uh, registration. Let's see how many people pass the test. Insurance. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't keep nothing else in there, them the two things. Okay. Oh, that, that's on the list. Oh, okay, that, that okay. I don't know that. Uh, that was it. Okay, All right, Karen's done. Mm-hmm. She, two things in everything. Going, everything else. Look at her optional. glove box. You look at her glove box. It's full Only of thing other in there is insurance and registration. Now it's full of other junk. So, okay. Oh, the manual to your car. That's that's another one. That's that, on there. That's I got that. Um, I keep napkins in mine. Not that's not on the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not do keep napkins. It's just what a mechanic thinks you should okay. have. Okay. It's just not on the list. It's fine. Um. I said insurance registration. Mm. Maybe something to check your tire. I don't have one. Tire pressure nine. gauges on there. Okay. You I, only got one left. It's, it's four things. Oh, well, shit. no. Actually, they got a lot of stuff on here. But that's you got three of the first four. Somebody said flashlight. Flashlight is on here. Mm. Okay. So then you got, uh, it looks like four more things. Mm. I, if you give up, I'll... I'll, I'll Tell you the rest. Thinking, yeah, because that's kind of do people keep like sunglasses, like shades? They didn't have that on the list. Oh, oh, oh! You you said it's for mechanics, so of course yeah. he wouldn't think about fucking shades. My bad. Mm-hmm. No, that's it for me. Okay, mini first aid kit. I don't that's, have one of those in the car. I do a, have one. That's actually but smart. That's a good one. That's smart. It makes sense. Um, <laughs> end up using all the bandages for. Uh, to wipe your hands off of McNuggets, you know. <laughs> Somebody said my last oil change information. I do be throwing it in there, and forgetting it. Like I said, it and forget it. I look in there, I have like four oil change receipts in my glove compartment. I don't do that because they just put a sticker on the window, and the sticker tells you what month or what mileage to get it done at again. Oh, it's so. just because it's just more convenient. So I just throw it in there, and forget it. I know. I'm just saying mm-hmm. it, that it makes no sense. What you're uh, doing. It's not really. It's <laughs> less convenient. It's not more convenient. It's just more paper in the glove just, compartment. Just, yeah, you should just you might as well throw it away. <laughs> um, pen and paper. Now I think you didn't say this one, but I know I keep pen and paper in my car because what if you got to write down phone number, license plate, some information, mm-hmm. um, anything you need to exchange information, whatever you don't have your phone on you or something. So yeah, definitely always keep pen and paper. Uh, a multi tool such as like a Swiss. Arm, instead of a Swiss Army life, he recommends a multi tool that includes pliers, screwdrivers, small knife. Uh, this could be useful for minor repairs and adjustments. Um, I don't, I think I have a Swiss Army knife, but I don't have a multi tool. I got to look that mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. And lastly, spare fuses. Now, I used to keep these in my car, with, your um, older car with, right? my, with my Honda Accord that I had a long time ago mm-hmm. because. My brother was putting in the radio and he did something and it fucked my car up. It, it we just, was driving one day and that bitch said, right it basically that. Had, <laughs> the car acted like I had a ghost in it. Yeah, me and Roger driving and the, everything just started flickering. It was wild. We were sitting in the car going, oh shit, what is this? So I ever since then, I kept spare uh, fuses and stuff in there. And also I messed it up one time. One time I was getting a jump and I put it, the, the things on backwards and blew some fuses oh, and in negative, my car. Negative. Yeah. You know what? I'm amazed at how many people don't know how to jump their car. And I'm like, well, it has the X and the minus on it. But I realized a lot of people just be like, I, it wasn't know. that I didn't. I mean, it wasn't that I didn't know I fucked up. It ah. just happened. I made a mistake. I put it I knew what I was doing as far as like where what should go and in my I, in my mind I had done it the right way and then I went and looked and said oh my god fucked it up 
Uh, but yeah, those are the things. So if, the little checkup. If you maybe you're listening in your car, you're looking in your glove compartment. I'm like, stop, okay, park first, okay. Please park. You know you're on the highway. What we, you doing? We want you to be safe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we care so, about your safety. What are you doing? All right. Um. Then uh, another thing I wanted to bring up real quick was um. Two, well, a couple of election related things. So let me pull out another beat. First thing is 42% of GOP Iowa caucus goers. So you, you're talking about the primaries, and you know Iowa is a big one for them. Yeah, I think they're the first one, ain't they? Or they kick it off. They're I think they're the first for for uh Republicans. Republicans. Okay, I, I think yes, Democrats yes. changed it after Biden or something. But okay. anyway, the, not that the Democrats are having a primary, just you know. Right, but I'm with you. But there's a couple of stories I want to point out and what they mean. The first one is 42% of GOP Iowa caucus goers say poisoning the blood remarks make them more likely to support Trump in this poll. What does that mean? Uh, so uh, it's a remarks he made about immigrants. Trump is going full Nazi. He is. Uh, he's talking about being a dictator. Mm -hmm. He's openly talking about. That's why I don't take it as a joke. He's openly talking about immigration and people that aren't like him, you know, um, he said he's made a recent claim that migrants were poisoned in the blood of our country. Uh, I recently watched this great documentary series on World War II on Netflix. Uh, John Boyega does a voiceover. It's uh, somber, but very well done. And the thing for me is just watching the stuff that Nazis did and that Hitler said and how people, it, it's like you watch it and you go, how did people let that happen? But we're living in it happening again. You know, we're yes, living sir. in people in America thinking this is not an existential threat that, you know, that the things that are shortcomings to them for the Biden administration are the kind of things that are like, might as well let Trump have it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I, I don't agree with them. And I think it's very dangerous that we're here. They, of course, would say. Uh, I don't take any responsibility for this. I blame the Biden administration. They haven't done what I want them to do. So therefore, it's their fault. But I'm like, regardless of whose fault you think it is, we all have to live in a fallout. Yes. So let's say somehow this administration came up short for you. It came up short, right? We, the alternative is this guy who is not going to just come up short, but he's purposely going to make things as horrible for you and all the things you believe in as possible. Mm -hmm. Refusing to accept that that is the choice, that that is the reality, is something that a lot of people on our side are at least playing around with the idea. Yeah, they're um, entertaining. And, and for me, I have no tolerance for that. I, I, just, I just can't and I don't. Right. And so it's interesting to see what Trump is the existential threat he he is what he says he is what he says he's gonna do and the voters 42 percent of the people that they polled were more likely to vote for him 28 percent said less likely but they're still gonna probably vote for him 29 percent said it don't matter so if you add up that 42 percent and then that 29 percent um, you're talking about something like 71% are either more likely or do not care about his Hitler white supremacy shit. They're voting because of it. Yes, sir. And this is why I don't do so much of the ex-politician is the problem. Mm -mm. Um, as much as I feel like the politicians are the, the system we have in place politically is to keep us from looking at each other as what the real problem is. And the real problem is a lot of people in our country agree with and support Trump. And because they happen to be white people, the complexion for protection in America, 
people keep making excuses for it, saying it's ec- the, ec- the economy, as if black and brown people ain't never been down bad in America. We still don't do this. Right. They make it sound like it's an education issue. They make it every issue but white supremacy, and this is what they want. And so I, I, I this is, to me, um, it's not necessarily shocking, but it is confirmation that his upgraded rhetoric is having an upgraded effect on those people because this is what they voted for in 2016. Yes, they did. It's what they voted for in 2020. And it's damn sure well what they're going to vote for in 2024 while we're sitting over here fighting amongst each other and talking about who's sit going home, who's sitting at home. Right. It's stupid. That was the first one. The second one I think is interesting because the framing of this, uh, I want to say, I forget who, I know Yahoo News is who sent the thing, but I've seen this headline a lot of places. Americans sour on the primary election process and major political parties in an AP Nork poll. Here's the thing, right? Because when you hear that, what it sounds like is Democrats and Republicans. We don't, we're tired of the primaries. We're tired of uh, the parties. We're sick of this shit, da, da, da. One, there's a di- general disdain in the American populace about voting and all this stuff, period. So you're mm-hmm. not, all these motherfuckers angry and unhappy and they think, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the system's fault of voting. It's, that's the real problem. It's not that your fellow American would like to see your black ass back in slavery. It's got to be some politician made it. But right. whatever, you know, that, that, that's not the point. The point is, Democrats don't have a primary right now. Mm-mm. Why is this reported this way? Why is this being reported this way? Who gives a fuck how Democrats feel about the primary right now? If 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 you're saying we should primary Biden, that would make you feel that means you support a primary, even with a sitting president. So in no way does this really have any reflection on the Democratic Party. This is about the GOP. And what the GOP voters are saying is that we don't like the presidential primary. Because we're going to vote for Trump. He's not participating in these debates. No, he's, he's not. not really caucusing. He's just going around doing mm-hmm. another MAGA tour. Mm-hmm. They already know who their guy is. So right. they don't give a fuck if Chris Christie or um, Nimrata uh, somehow takes the lead by 4%. Right yeah, now. Nikki Haley. Yeah. That was a joke. Um, but they don't care. So that's why I find it interesting, the framing of this article, because it's like, one third of Republicans say they have a great deal or quite a bit of confidence that votes in the Republican primary elections and caucuses will be counted correctly, which means like there's an entire other part of their party, 32%, say they have a uh, little to no confidence that their primary votes, GOP votes, Votes where only they vote. Nobody else Republicans is count the votes. No Democrats, no black is people involved. involved in this shit at all. This isn't them saying I don't have confidence in the Atlanta, Georgia section of the country and they're going to cheat. I, I, have, I don't have confidence in Detroit where the black people live. This is them saying the entire process of voting from the rooter to the tutor is uh, it, it, it is essentially illegal or they are or, or rigged, and this can be traced back directly to Trump. Yes, because this is what happens when you lay down with this snake in your party. He says the only acceptable results are the ones where I win. They don't question the results when he wins. Mm-hmm. We didn't need to do no recounts and all that shit from their side when he won with less of the popular vote than Hillary Clinton. There wasn't no, well, yeah, that was, he would he would say something like, I, I really won by millions or something, but really, you, he's not interested in auditing that. He's not about to go back and do, when they lose and they now have a party of these people, right? From every local race to election deniers on the ballot, asking for your vote while saying, if I don't win, it was not, then that just means the votes weren't right. Right. I win because I said I want, I'm running. So no matter how many checks and balances on this system, anything that is less than I won, then it's rigged. And I think to a lesser extent, you can trace it back to Bernie Sanders. Right. Especially when you're talking primary. 
because he was the guy with him and his Bernie bros that stoked the fires of the Democratic uh, primary is rigged against me when it just turned out that Hillary Clinton had more people that wanted to vote for her. Period. Point blank. Facts. We talked about it on the show at the time. There's never been evidence of rigging that's been like, well, they had emails to each other where they kind of expressed that they didn't like Bernie Sanders. Like, they didn't like an independent. Right, because he's not a goddamn Coming Democrat. into the Democratic Party and trying to usurp it. Yes. They didn't stop him from being on any ballot. They didn't change any votes. They didn't stop anybody uh, from voting for him. Nothing like that happened. He just lost. Right. And then he refused to concede until the last fucking minute. Yes, right? and I, that shit motherfucking mattered. And I think that right there stoked a lot of what Trump later would run on and be like, it's all rigged. It's all bullshit. People, if people don't like me, that's the same thing as saying it's rigged. Uh, anything that's not a result of me winning means that obviously this is all bullshit. And so it made me think about all that shit where, um, like I said, they keep trying to frame it as a, it's both parties. And this is the, to me, this is the cover that we give whiteness in America because we want to turn this into a both sides issue to make it seem like it's just how people are. No, it's how the conservative white people are in America, especially the ones that support Trump. This is their issue. They do not support or believe anything but Trump will win, period. You know, I get what they're saying. I do think a large following of the Bernie Sanders primary thing was definitely about we're white people and we we like Bernie. So how the fuck could he possibly lose? It's like because y'all haven't talked to anybody else and y'all aren't the only ones that get a choice to vote on in Democratic elections. Right. On the Democrat side, it's a big tent. And if you haven't done anything to secure all these other bases, but you, white people, you're, you're going to lose. lose. Yes, you are. Whoever does the best with more than just white people always wins the Democratic primary. It's just what it is. Uh, ever since, you know, the parties flipped. It is what it is. It's the power brokering of it. But yeah, I just thought this was an interesting article in the, you know, half of independents said that both parties, are, well, that's why they're independents. They hate both parties. Right. So, like, you're not really making the case. You're really talking about conservatives. And you're to me, you're missing the elephant in the room, which is that we don't know how to put, uh, sorry uh, to hit you with multiple cliches, but we don't know how to put this genie back in the bottle. You know, because when Trump loses, if he loses, he's going to say it's rigged and that it was fake and that da 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 da. And then we're going to have to worry about another January 6th or what the fuck we're going to do with that. Um, and if he wins, he's told you what the fuck he's going to do in the yes, article I just has covered. laid it out, people. He is not bullshitting. He will make sure he never loses another motherfucking election. What about that? Don't people understand? All right. So it's just interesting to see the framing of this as a both sides thing. Like, listen, hey, some of us just think Joe Biden, we should get a better candidate to Joe Biden. Well, that's totally different than I don't believe in elections. I don't believe the votes will be counted. That's two different things. And I don't think Yahoo trying to frame it as a, it's like both sides is helping. Um, all right. All right. Let's move into something a little more fun. Okay. Um, start wrapping this thing up. Uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, uh, Guess the Race. Um, my Guess the Race music. Oh. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 All right, guess the race time, Karen. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, gonna go around the globe. Karen's gonna guess the race of people involved in these articles I read, and uh, of course, her in the chat room, my plan, and they're all racist. Police charge that. A 20-year-old woman repeatedly beat her boyfriend with a Christmas tree during a pre-dawn skirmish at the Paris, Florida residence on December 24th. Oh, damn. Yep. Beat with a Christmas tree. Uh, according damn, to is she Scrooge? Right. I wonder if it was a fake one or a real one, you know? According to court filing, Miracle Rivera, 20, and the victim, 24, engaged in a verbal altercation about infidelity early Sunday morning in the bedroom of their St. Petersburg home. Oh, no. Somebody was cheating. Mm-hmm. 
she saw mama kissing Santa Claus. Apparently so. Cops say the victim separated himself from Rivera and relocated to the living room around 3.40 a.m. Rivera allegedly followed the man into the living room where he was lying on the couch where Rivera picked up a Christmas tree and began to strike the victim with it repeatedly. Mm -mm -mm. The size of the tree is not detailed. The tree battering investigators allege resulted in the victim sustaining numerous minor scratches on his upper body and arms. Rivera was subsequently charged and arrested for domestic violence, a domestic battery, and booked in the county jail. She was released at 2.40 p.m. on Christmas Day and had pleaded not guilty to the misdemeanor count. A judge has ordered her to have no illegal contact with the victim with whom Rivera has resided for two years. I guess she got to find yes, somewhere else to live. Apparently so. Yeah. Um, that'd be Put that one on the Hallmark movie channel. Karen, <laughs> guess the race of Miracle Rivera. Miracle Rivera? Mm -hmm. Latino. All right, Karen's going with Latino. Let's check the chat room, see what they believe. Blacksican, War of the Spanish Roses Mexican, Well, Feliz Navidad Latinx, Florida Latina. Uh, the correct answer is Latina, says Ramsey. Okay. The correct answer is she's black. <laughs> Some of you did get it right. The one person said black to him. So. <laughs> that's her. That's a black woman. Uh, now, she may be Afro-Latina, but she looked black to me. <laughs> that last name, boy. Mm-hmm. Miracle Rivera. Yeah, it was a tricky one. Uh, let's keep it... Uh, uh, <laughs> Keep it up at, at Christmas time. Okay. A uh, disheveled Santa at a shopping center has infuriated parents after he was photographed missing shoes and a hat. A ah! Santa Claus out here without, that don't have his clothes on, kids lose their minds. Uh, the replacement Santa stepped in after another Mr. Claus didn't appear. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> this is the backup Santa. <laughs> Changing clothes, and they was like, Bobby, who's up to Santa? Yeah, like Santa's on the on the injured reserve list, you know. <laughs> it's like being mad at the backup quarterback. Like, oh, why can't he throw touchdowns the way Tom Brady does? Because he's not Tom Brady. No, he's not. Uh, Mr. Claus couldn't appear, but family said they were still waiting for more than an hour for their disappointing experience. Oh, rather than the traditional big black boots, the Santa opted for red socks and forgot his classic hat. So he literally came out of uniform. I mean, but are the hat and the shoes that big a deal? Like maybe it's I don't. Not, maybe not. I haven't been a kid for a long time. But I feel it's like not. the the parent is the one that's acting mad. I feel like a, yes. a kid would be like, "Yeah, that's Santa." I guarantee you, them kids didn't give a fuck. Yeah, one parent the, said the parents was like, "You ain't got black boots on." One parent said the experience was incredibly disappointing, as even the camera to capture the moment for the children uh, that the children met Santa was ruined because it was broken. Oh, they hit y'all like the ice cream machine at McDonald's. <laughs> you better take it on your cell phone. Laura Johnson, 38, took her four-year-old son, Bobby, to meet Father Christmas and said, we had been to the previous Santa experiences at the Metro Center and always had a great time. This we paid uh, twenty seven dollars eighty five. Well, twenty I guess twenty seven eighty five pounds. I guess I don't know mm -hmm. for two adults and a child. Uh, we arrived on time, but we're told that could be over an hour wait, despite having pre booked this back in November. Um, about uh, half an hour went by. We got into the Winter Wonderscape Park. Overall, it took just over an hour to meet Santa. He was wearing socks and moaning out loud, asking, "How many more children do I need to see before my break?" <laughs> Lord, Santa. <laughs> Santa was like, I've had enough of the kids. Put it back up, Santa. That's the realest Santa Claus ever. That's the <laughs> one I want. Santa was like, I need a drink. I feel like that's Santa for real. He's like, y'all know I got to deliver these goddamn presents. How many more <laughs> motherfuckers in line? <laughs> so this is what happens when you get the backup Santa. The real Santa would have been smiling, you know, because he know how to put the act on. 
the whole experience was lacking in resources and staff. There were tables out drawn, but no crayons or clean paper for children to write on. After outcry from the parents, I told you it was the parents, they said the stand-in Santa is no longer working for events company, which organized the Grotto event. I mean, he was probably watching football, so he's like, oh, man, I got to come in and do oh, Santa you're stuff. Right, you're right, because he... Because initially he probably had planned to have the day off. Yeah. Right. He's the he's the backup Santa. Mm -hmm. That's why he ain't got the black boots. The real Santa got them. They said in a statement, our Santa team has had a lot of positive feedback from other visits, so we are sorry it has not been to our normal high standards. As the grotto had a huge response for tickets, the event company added in additional slots and notified anyone who pre-booked that there would be a wait unless they wanted to rebook for a quieter time. Well, oh, that's that's the company's fault. Anyone who mm -hmm. didn't want to wait has been was given a refund. Yeah, the company got greedy with that. Mm -hmm. For sure. They're probably double booked and triple booked. Yeah. They probably didn't get not trying to find they give him enough time to actually quote unquote rest. And he like right. kid after kid after he like, God damn, how many kids? I just picture him smoking a cigarette, like, fuck you want, little nigga. Ah! What, you, what you want for Christmas, bitch? <laughs> he ain't had enough of them kids. How many more of these motherfuckers is it? Nah, the camera broke. Remember it in your memories, okay? <laughs> <laughs> The designer might have broke the camera. Right. Put, you got a camera in your pocket. Take a picture with your phone. It'll last I'm longer. I'm tell you. That's what they told everybody. Yeah, my shoes is too tight. That's why I took it off. And it's hot in here. I ain't wearing no hat. <laughs> you know I'm not real. <laughs> <laughs> Parents would have really lost their motherfucking minds. You said that in front of their kids. <laughs> All right, Karen. Guess the race of the Santa Claus. <laughs> the Santa Claus is white all right karen says it is a white christmas because santa claus is white the replacement let's check the chat room see what they believe uh the race of the santa claus uh backup is i'm on my fucking lunch break billy bob thornton filming bad santa <laughs> three white yeah he, i want to be sound like uh mike mike tomlin that time that dude tried to stop him in there <laughs> Fucking working. Um, uh, Santa rocks black. Air Force was black. Oh no! Megan Kelly was right. Santa Claus can't be black. White. The correct answer is white. One did say black. <laughs> Santa right there. Mm -hmm. He don't even have the little beard part, the mustache part of the beard. He did not come ready. Like he <laughs> he came in there and they just gave him whatever fucking leftovers they had and said, "Go on out there with the kids." He definitely looked like Santa that was on his day off and forgot that it was Christmas. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, the, another reason why I knew it was white. I mean, white because if Santa would have been. Any other color, the fucking parents would have complained about the race of the Santa. That's a good one. Also, I think it's... Well, he also showed up on time. Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, ah! <laughs> but also, the other thing I think is funny is in this picture, clearly the person took the picture was taking it to be complaining. So, like, mm -hmm. he's taking his picture and it's... Like, I wonder if they told him, like, look over here, bitch. Like, Wait till I talk to your manager. <laughs> or if it was like, oh, can we get a picture real quick? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Send this on in to the manager. Uh, all right, let's do, uh, let's go to the bonus round. So far, uh, Karen is um, uh, one and one. One and one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one and one. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 A man wearing a dress and carrying a dildo allegedly tried to burglarize a Florida residence of a 69-year-old nice woman, according to police, who also charged a suspect with stalking. What? There's a lot happening in that statement, sir. Mm-hmm. Mary Triple Xmas. Investigators say Marshall Jones, 40, first showed up outside the victim's St. Petersburg residence at 1.30 a.m. on a Friday. He was spotted on video trying to open the door. At the time, according to an arrest affidavit, Jones was wearing a dress and had what appeared to be an erect penis in his hand at waist level. After trying to in enter the... Hand. Yeah, that's scarier than the gun. 
After trying to enter the home, Jones is then seen pressing the erect penis against the door before walking away. Jones allegedly came back to the property yesterday afternoon, but subsequently fled on foot. When police later busted Jones, he reportedly copped to the attempted burglary on December 15th and returned Tuesday to the home in the city's historic Rosa Park neighborhood. Uh, during questioning, cops reported Jones said he was holding a dildo which had slipped out when he was recorded by surveillance camera last week. It's unclear from where the sex toy slipped out. Jones claimed that he You know was, how you take sex toys just slip you out? You know how it slip out sometimes. Jones claimed that he was outside the home yesterday to check on the female occupant since he claimed to have seen someone shot at the residence two weeks earlier. There's no record of the purported shooting. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm gonna say not trustworthy. I'm not gonna mm -mm. trust this. Mm -mm. I just wanted to check on it with my deal, though. Mm -mm. Uh, also, I was gonna rob the place. Uh, he also uses the surname Blair. He was arrested for attempted burglary, a felony, and stalking and resisting the officer without violence. Both misdemeanors. He's locked up in lieu of $10,150 bond. Court records show that uh, Jones, who lives in St. Petersburg, has a lengthy rap sheet that includes four separate convictions of cocaine possession, as well as trespass and obstruction and marijuana possession convictions. He was arrested earlier this year after a homeowner told police that Jones and another man were casing his residence. Jones was subsequently arrested for possession of burglary tools, as well as possession of cocaine and drug paraphernalia. So, all right, Karen, guess the race. Of Mr. Marshall Jones. Marshall Jones? Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm gonna go black. Karen's gonna go black. Let's check the chat room, see what they believe for Marshall Jones. Uh they're taking their time, you know. They they gotta go. Out stumping for DeSantis White, Slick Dick Jones had a bone to pick, black, Eminem White, White. Uh the correct answer is uh my white wife says he's black, says Keenan. All right, RG3. Thanks for letting us know. Uh Rain Dick White. <laughs> the correct answer is Carrie got it right, he's black. Any people in the chat room missed it? Yeah, the name sounded white, but just the crowns. Did you say it was like in Rosa Parks or something? I was like, mm. that's not like a nigga neighborhood. Well, it's interesting because that neighborhood is Rosa Parks. R-O-S-E-R. -E oh. But you still got it right, and that's all that counts, Karen. <laughs> My bad. I heard Rosa Parks. Yeah. Yeah, so you got it right. All right, let's wrap this thing up. We got to do some sore ratchetness, and that's it. Two people were arrested and one was released from jail after a stabbing in Spokane Valley last week. And this sword is some real like Power Rangers looking ass sword. <laughs> <laughs> the Spokane County Sheriff's Office responded to a fight. Oh, yeah. Involving a knife. That's not a knife. That's definitely Prince of Persia sword. That do look like one of them swords. He would he would he put that in his back. Yeah. Um, witnesses told police multiple victims were involved and no one was, and one was on the ground not moving. When officers arrived at the scene, they found one victim with several gaping wounds, including to the back of his head. He was transported to the hospital for additional medical treatment. The second, vic second victim was found with several cuts and declined to be transported. A K-9 unit and an unmanned aircraft system, a drone, were deployed in an attempt to find the suspects. K9 tracked to the front of the apartment building where both suspects were found inside of the tank. Yeah, they, they sure he wasn't just hopping from top of the building to building? Right. <laughs> doing flips and shit. Right, doing fucking parkour, jumping yeah. in haystacks. <laughs> right. Him and his four brothers that happen to also be turtles. <laughs> right. Uh, through initial witness information and victim statements, police believe Sebastian R. Neifler, <laughs> what a name, 
20, 21, <laughs> got into a fight with one of the victims. Witnesses say the fight de-escalated and the two separated. The SCSO says a short time later, the victim went back outside where they saw Nifler holding what appeared to be a sword. The victim suspect, the female suspect, Elizabeth M. Lorikovich, 21, started to encourage the fight uh, verbally. So she's like, oh, fuck them up. That's when Nifler approached the victim and started swinging the sword like a baseball bat. Mm. The victim was struck multiple times in the hands, arm, lower back, and the head. He fell to the ground where he continued to be assaulted by Nifler and Lorikovich. Uh, who kicked him multiple times in the head and face. A second victim jumped in, taking the sword from Nifler and cutting his hands. There is no information on the status of the victims at the time. Nifler and Lorikovich were transported and booked into the Spokane County Jail on charge of the first and second degree assault. Y'all be careful out there, all right? Please do. People getting sword cuts for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, y'all. Uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, and, you know, happy rest of Kwanzaa. And mm-hmm. we'll uh, see you guys uh, soon. Probably no feedback show this weekend. Probably going to do two episodes again next week and then feedback show next Saturday. Mm-hmm. So uh, until then, I love you. I love you too. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of your night. Peace. Mm-hmm.